Okay, what we made before was headline copy. Nice, big, bold text um, that's going to be the first words somebody looks at on the screen because it's really big. Now they want us to make body copy. Specifically, they uh, want us to set up a new vertical guide that goes at the end of the word systems. And then they're asking us to come about seven and a half inches down the page and make a text box. So we'll do that. Um, I will grab the type tool. And before we just clicked with the type tool and started typing, and that's a good way to set up a headline. But to create a text box where the lines of um, a long paragraph are gonna wrap around, you want to click with the type tool and then drag to create a box. And then you'll put the words inside of it. So I'm looking at the left hand side ruler and it's gonna show me where, where seven and a half inches is. And so all I have to do is come over to my first guide, find seven and a half inches and look up at the top and make sure I'm on that guide. And then I will click and drag and make a box that goes all the way over to my second guide that I made. Now I have a blinking cursor, but since I just used the type tool to make this big text up here, um, Illustrator actually remembers this 48 point size and that's too big. They used Gil Sands regular set at 11 points. So I'm gonna set that up before I go get my text. Right here, I will switch from bold to regular and from 48 points to 11 points. Now the website says that you can go to lipsum.com and get some dummy text. So that's what we will do because that site is still active and they suggest getting two paragraphs of text there. So I'll open a new tab here and I will go to lipsum, L-I-P-S-U-M.com. And we're now participating in a long tradition. Uh, graphic designers have been using this same text as dummy text since about the 1500s. So what you do is you scroll down, change the default five to two paragraphs, and you say, generate my lorem ipsum. And it gives you two paragraphs worth. So you select it, right click and copy, and then you can go to Illustrator. The cursor is already in the text box, so you can come up to Edit and choose Paste. And there's my words. Now, I get this little red thing because the words actually go beyond where the text box ends. I have too much to fit in this box. But since it's dummy text, I'm not going to worry about that. In step five of exercise four, they, well, actually steps four and five, they want you to make sure that your text is left justified and they want you to adjust the letting. Letting is the space between lines of type in a paragraph. With the text left aligned like it is, they want you to notice that even without the grid, the guides turned on, I'm gonna hide them. Even without the guides turned on and without that box selected and showing, because the text here is left aligned, it creates through the principle of continuation, your eye automatically continues this line up to the letter S. And over here, even though it's not a perfectly straight line, there's still an association coming from the end S down to this edge. And so they, they just want you to notice that. And then I'm gonna turn the guides back on. Guides, show my guides. Uh, what they wanted us to do is click inside the text box with the with the type tool and then press Control A on Windows or Command A on a Mac to select all of this text. Then they want us to open the letting by holding down the Option key and pressing the down arrow on the keyboard. So we're creating more space between the lines of text. And if we went with the up arrow, we would actually create less space and make this much, much harder to read. They also want you to see that as you open up the space in between, this starts to look less and less like a solid black block. And as it becomes more and more open, 
the value of it on the page um, shifts and gets lighter and lighter. So it's more like a grayscale. And they just want you to notice that. That's one of the reasons why we tend to adjust letting. In exercise five, they want you to add color to the text, but only to a little part of it. Um, just the dot over the eye, They're, you're gonna replace that with a red square. Now, you could just draw a red square on top of it. Uh, if that's all you wanted to do, that's probably easier than what they're asking you to do now. But the technique that they're teaching to turn the, the type, the letters that you could edit as type into shapes um, is really, really useful. What we're going to do is select the headline grid systems and we're going to choose type create outlines and I'll explain why it's useful. With the black arrow, the selection tool, I'm going to click my type and I'm going to come up here and choose type create outlines and now you can see all the little anchor points that form the shapes of each individual letter and the reason that we do this is because when you send your project to a print shop if you're not 100 percent sure that they're going to have the same set of fonts installed you really have to do this or else your font might get accidentally change to something else. So what you chose and you precisely fit and you did the kerning for, when they open it on their computer, it gets changed to a font that they do have installed and when they print it, it doesn't look right. So this is an essential step to learn how to do and you're going to be required to do it for your um, next week's project where you create your own um, illustration with type. So um, this step where you go up to type and you choose create outlines. That is going to take care of this problem. After they have us create outlines, the outline text is grouped together. So we're going to ungroup. After you create, create outlines, I want you to see in the layers panel what they're talking about here. What I have selected is always the thing that has the, um, I call it a target, that little square, the highlighted square on its layer. And you can see that our type is grouped. So I'm going to go up to the object menu and I'm going to ungroup it and, and look instead of where my mouse is, look over at the layers panel right now. And now I'm going to click ungroup and look what happened. The group went away and all of my letters popped out to be individual items that I can select by themselves. This is key to changing the shape of an individual letter. Over here with the I, I have what's called a compound path. That's because the eye is actually two separate shapes, a rectangle and a circle. In step three of this exercise, they have us use the direct selection tool and delete the dot over the eye. So I will switch to the white arrow, the direct selection tool, and click on the dot. And I think actually what they did, I'm gonna get the zoom tool for a second and zoom way in. What they did is they zoomed way in they got the direct selection tool and they marqueed around it. They basically drew a little lasso with this tool. And you can tell that that's a little different than what I did. I'm going to show you again. I clicked with the direct selection tool. And I probably got close enough to an edge where I just got one anchor point. If I actually click right in the middle, I get the whole letter. So you should do it the way they did click and drag around just the dot of the eye. That way I get all the anchor points for the top dot, but I don't select any of the bottom rectangle. So once you've got that, you can press the delete key on your keyboard and remove that dot. In step four, they want us to use the rectangle tool and create a square in place of the dot over the eye. In step five, they want us to duplicate that square and move it down until it's just above the first word in the body copy. And then in step six, they want us to scale that square by 300% and position it above the copy at the bottom of the page just to the right of the guide for step seven. I've got the rectangle tool and um, what, I've, what I can see here, these little lines that say intersect, these are really helpful. Um, these are called smart guides and you turn them on and off under right here, smart guides, with the check mark on, they'll come on. And so I'm going to use these to my advantage when I draw my rectangle. I'm going to intersect with the top of my D and the left side of my I, click and drag. And when I reach the right side, well, that's when I will 
let go. I can, I can see that I reach the right side of the eye because Illustrator shows me. That's really cool. So now what I have to do is color that red. So right up here, I will pick a red color or pink or orange, whatever color you like, you can choose. I'm gonna go with orange, that orange. Now I need to zoom back out so I will fit my artboard in the window. And what I wanna do is uh, copy this dot. Actually, I can zoom in just a little more. So when you hover over an item, uh, you can click on it in the middle and drag it somewhere else. Now I'm going to undo that because I just spent all that time positioning it precisely. But what I want to do instead is hover over it, hold down my option key or the alt key on windows and see how my cursor changed and I get two arrows. Check that out. That means that when I drag, I will make a copy of this object. Do do do. So they said to put it up above this letter and so now I've got two and then they said to scale it so I will switch to the scale tool I double clicked it the scale tool and I'm going to scale it up 300 percent exactly like they said you can turn on the preview to see how much bigger that is and then I'm going to switch to the selection tool because they said to align this with the vertical guide. So there it's touching the vertical guide. For exercise six, they want us to use the direct selection tool to expand the top of the letter D way up. Right now, this is selected, so I'm going to just click away so that it's not. Now they want us to select the top two anchor points of the um, letter D here. So when I hover over them with the direct selection tool, they enlarge to make a bigger target for me to click, which is kind of handy. And what I want is to click on one. The one that is selected is dark in the middle and the other ones are white in the middle. Now to get both, uh, I need to hold down my shift key on the keyboard and click the second one. When they're both highlighted dark like that, you can move those two points up or down with the up or down arrows on the keyboard. They held down the shift key because that moves it um, 10 points at a time instead of one point at a time. Once you've done that, click away and you've completed the exercise. Why did they extend that one letter? Well, it was basically to emphasize this vertical line on the grid. I'm gonna zoom out, um, fitting my artboard in the window I'm going to turn the guides off. Okay, what we see now in this particular composition is that um, as our eye moves down the white of the page, the very first thing we see is the D, um, and but it's a it's a long line, and so right away our eye makes this connection that there's this line that goes down the page from up here to where the text starts. And then even though the text is aligned with systems, the D is the first thing that calls attention to that. And then from the top of the D, our eye immediately goes to the color. It's the only different color on the screen. And from that block of color, our eye immediately goes to the similar color and shape right down here. So we are leading the viewer's eye down the page with the help of color to draw a focal point and the grid to set up this line for our eye to follow. These are the kinds of things we're thinking about this week as we work with a grid. After you finish all six exercises, you need to save your Illustrator file, last name, first name, chapter four, in Illustrator format. And you're gonna keep this master version for your Illustrator folio that you turn in late. File, save as, and wherever your Illustrator folio is that you're keeping your things in, um, find it and save your file. And this is chapter four. And leave that AI file extension on and click save. And then when it asks you what version, click okay.